and enthusiastic about the mix between cartography and technology. And uh, joining her again, Silvana, uh, is a cartographer and professor at the Federal University of Paraná, Brazil. Uh, she is chair of the International Cartographic Association Commission on Open Source Geotechnologies and involved with Youth Mappers, OSGEO, geo for all and other networks. So uh, welcome, uh, Silvana, and welcome, Gabriel. Hope you are all well. Thank you. Thank you, John. So good morning, good evening, or good afternoon for all the listeners. As John said, I'm Gabrielle, and today I'm going to present about uh, our research developed together with Professor Silvana, one of the keynotes of Phosphor-G, and João Vitor Mesa Bravo. Uh, both of them are my master advisors in the graduate program of geodetic science. And in our research, we use Jupyter notebooks for viewing and analyzing spatial data in two different contexts. So um, next, please. Well, nowadays in many places in the world and more than ever in this pandemic context, we uh, under understand the importance of trustful uh, sources of information and data. So Silvana talked a little about that and has spoken about the complicated scenario here in Brazil. And I know that is not a problem ex is exclusive of here, but uh, now we are seeing how, uh, this prop how this science has been discreted with a lot of, of misinformation and fake news. So Silvana always said that we need to build um, and keep the trust in science so that we believe that this is possible through the open science and the open and we can see also this uh, importance uh, through the fast and accessible knowledge so open science doesn't have a, com a communal definition but we have some characteristics in the core of the knowledge as transparency, accessibility, shareability, and so on. So we can practice this concept, applying their fair principles in our research, making our productions uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Next. So uh, the concept of open in geospatial information has increased in importance since the beginning of the 21st century and uh, have several of open solutions uh, have emerged in the context of web 2.0 technologies. So in this wave, Python gained relevance and visibility uh, in the proof of that is that Python is the most popular code language uh, since 2018 until now. So these tools and libraries have been developed within a trend in adoption of free software solutions as Jupyter Notebooks and Google Collab Notebooks. Next, please. So Jupyter is a computational notebook browser based tool that support workflows, code, uh, data, and visualization, combining inputs and outputs in the same client size. So the platform, this platform and Google Collab are example of open source tools that contribute to the open science. So here I, uh, I show two examples that use Jupyter notebooks. The first one is LeafMap uh, library of the library leaf map that um, is used to develop maps in Jupyter notebooks. And the another example is the work of Anita Grasser that uh, developed a protocol, a protocol for identifying problems in continuous movement data, also using Jupyter notebooks and publish a lot of articles uh, about it. Next, please. So talking about uh, our research, we choose to use uh, the Google Collab, combining with a lot of Python li libraries as PsychoPG, Matplotlib, uh, Open Source Service, Jenkspy, 
and all this uh, these libraries all the comb the combination of these libraries um, it was possible to develop uh, two different applications with Python in Google Colab next so the first application is called map for uh, in Portuguese uh, is mapeamento é, da formação dos professores é, no Paraná. É, next, please. So, this project emer emerged of many challenges that we faced here in Brazil, such as illiteracy, drop dropout rates, and efficiency of teacher training. So, first of all, it was created a national program to provide higher or complementary uh, guidance for teaching of basic in basic education because there are teachers who teach uh, who lecture without superior education or teach in different areas that diverge from their uh, formations so we think this uh, par 4 project it was created in map 4 so the map 4 um, is a project that is a project that map basic schools here in Paraná, that is a state inside of, in south of Brazil, and aim to ensure uh, the educational quality offered in primary education. Um, so the team involved in the develop, in development of this project is very multidisciplinary with cartographers, uh, professors, designers, so is that was one reason that we choose to develop our thematic maps in Jupyter's notebooks instead a, instead a GIS software to establish a better communication with the developers team that was the people we we were most uh, mostly in touch next so this is the our system architecture the data uh, was from official bases and also produced by professors and other on and other persons in the project. We store storage this data in a in a da special database in a PostGIS plus uh, PostGrip plus PostGIS. And in the Jupyter notebook, the user can choose some parameters to uh, choose what uh what maps to real to visualize so these parameters are sent to the to the database this database return a special information to the geo server and geo server return a wms to the the jupyter so the the user can query a lot of spatial queries and visualize uh, a response, a spatial response. Next. So these images illustrate some of the results achieved in this work. So the first image is the uh, widget that the um, user can choose a higher, uh, a higher course, uh, a higher specific, a specific higher course to uh, visualize the data. And um, this data is classified in natural breaks and they can, they can visualize the number of vacancies of this higher course in proportional um, punctual symbols. And the other layer is the boundaries of, um, of the munis municipies uh, classify it with the number of uh, professors with uh, higher educational, in, uh, higher formation, uh, education in, Par in Paraná. Next. So the second application is a collaborative emotional map in the context of urban mobility. Next. So the emotional cartography enabled the representation of our emotions experienced in a specific location of the space according to the individual emotional bound. So this is, could be applied in development of urban policies, including those of urban mobility. 
So the data user was acquired in an intermodal challenge here in, in Curitiba. And the participants indicate what emojis, what emojis represented their emotions during uh, when they traveling along the paths taken in a dif different transport modes um, in the city. So the emotions emotions were also represented through uh, emojis in the maps. Next. So here is some of the system architecture. So the data was firstly handled in the Q, uh, QGIS. So we, uh, the data collected was uh, point, points collected and we attribute the, these points to the lines of the street lines. Um, we storage this data in also in Postgres with post, Postgres. And the system here is very, um, it's like the, the, other, the other project. So the user can choose parameters to visualize the results. And these parameters are passed to the, the, the database and returned to the Python notebook. Here, we didn't util, utilize, utilize uh, the geo server because we uh, show the data we utilize, utilize the data with uh, no, we didn't need to use uh, the geo server. Next. So this is one of the results achieved. Uh, this map, the user can, uh, through the widgets, choose an emotion and see all the streets that the emotion or emoji was assigned. So let's play the, this one more time to view the result. Next. So this is another example that the user can choose a specific street and see all the uh, emotions that was assigned to that street. So all the results that we, uh, our maps that we um, also developed was uh, making a route between, between two points. And for example, see all the emotions that was assigned to the street that are part of their, that route. Okay, next. So um, here in this work, uh, we reinforced that the notebooks could contribute with open science into practice the fair uh, principles. We could um, we could see some advantage of these methods as monitoring, implement, and implementation of simultaneous simultaneously coding with a, with a developer team, for example. One of those uh, advantage is the openness of the development process. And in this case, we can, we could improve the communication and collaboration with the multidisciplinary team. And also it was possible to uh, better reproduce, or reprodu reproducibility of the methods. So we also identify some disadvantages uh, one of them is that this system, this, the use of Jupyter's notebooks, uh, requires re some background programming language uh, in Python or a lo logic of uh, programming. So this is point to the importance of teaching and learning programming languages in geospace, in geoscience, uh, as cartographers and geographers. So this is uh, a very important point that we we believe. So another thing is that the Jupyter's uh, is not, this application is not developed to the end user of the, the maps. So the teacher that want to visualize the, the, vac the number of vacancies in a higher specific course uh, will not use these Jupyter's notebook. They will use um, 
another product develop, developed based on these Jupiters. So uh, the interface and the interactions in Jupyter are not uh, very um, intuitive for the end user. So one, the, the last point is that Google Collab is a little bit limited in the options to manipulate the server. So it is possible to install several libraries uh, in, in Google Collab, but sometimes there are some point that um, there are some limitations to, to develop some, some coding there. Next. So this, this is, uh, thank you, obrigada, gracias for your attention. So it was very, I think, quickly. So if you have any questions and thank you for the, the event. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the uh, presentation and the great work. Um, obrigada. Um, there are a couple of questions, but um, you may have answered them in the, in, in the conclusion part, but um, I think it may be good to get into a little bit detail there. So if, you, if it's okay, I'm going to uh, share those questions to you one by one. Um, so what is the step function used to allow users to interact with uh, the Jupyter Notebook? Do users have to change the parameters in the script themselves or um, how do they enable the drop down lists, et cetera? Thank you. Uh, well, the users, the users can interact with the, the, the program through the widgets that we program with the IPy widgets. And then every time they'd want to um, see this widget, and see a map, you have to play a lot of uh, boards. So you play one and show the widget, and then the user choose the parameter. And the next one you have to play to see the result. So it's a very manual way to, to see the results, but it's very nice because you can see the coding, the, how the coding works, how the code works. I don't know if I answer the, okay. the question. Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, can those interfaces or can the map display can be embedded to other sites or it is only accessible through Jupyter only? Mm -hmm. um, I know that we we can storage this in, in GitHub and we can also play this Jupyter in the um, uh, I forgot the name is a viewer of of these Jupiters, but I uh, didn't try to embed these notebooks in a HTML page, for example. I don't know if uh, I don't know if it if it's possible, but I can search a little bit of and uh, answer you by email if you want to send me this question. I don't know if you wanna have a commentary about this. But yeah, just uh, we can save the H HTML of the maps because you are using volume. But the interaction process, I think it it would be need to be reprogrammed to show other interface like we're using Streamlit or other libraries. Okay, um, thank you. Um, there are similar questions like how do the users log into the application in order to use Jupyter notebooks and are these notebooks available to the public? So what is the, uh, how, what was the access to the uh, notebooks uh, you presented? Okay, so in the, in the presentation, sorry, I forgot to mention that in the results, I put a QR code that redirects to my GitHub where the, the notebooks are um, uh, storage. So we, want, we also want to um, share the link of the Google Collab that the, per, the, the people could interact with them. But sometimes we have some problem with the um, like security problem with the passwords and access of our database. So we are working with in this, but the code could be um, viewed in my GitHub 
uh, I can put the links in the, the chat here. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it could be great if you can provide those links in Venulus for the other attendees to be able to access that. Uh, the last question uh, in front of me is, um, what kind of enhancements would you like to implement as a follow-up after this project? Uh, what would you uh, repeat? The enhancements, oh. uh, the things for the future. Enhancements, oh, improvements, okay. future work, yeah. Okay, thank you. Do you want to say something, Sylvana? No, it's just because uh, the the map for projects kind of finished, but the emotional maps are going on. So we have we had a lot of new things. So she can talk a bit more because it's her master project. It's due to finish the end of this year. Yes, the map for project is uh, it was a project developed in the year in the federal university that they were I think finishing the process. So the the, the developer team uh, used the notebook to develop another platform. So this is was the the use and uh, the emotional map is the the theme the theme of my uh, master. So we are. We are already uh, acquired some another data, and I will develop another Jupyter uh, notebook to uh, this other data in order to compare these two applications and the the also the data that was acquired. We work at it like uh, selecting better the the emojis, and uh, uh, for, because we had the pandemic, so we couldn't uh, collect data directly. So we did all a street view uh, walk through the city. So collect a, a lot of data with a lot of new users, and uh, we are working mainly in the uh, creating uh, using we use PG routing to create roots with uh, using as weight the the emotions. So we could uh, uh, avoid places where you feel fear and uh, things like that, as, and uh, uh, having more positive emotions. So it's the next part <laughs> of the project. Uh, th yes, thank I you. You, already, you also already answered, I think, Nicolas, uh, question he was saying that i want to know more about emotional maps so uh you gave us a little bit about what the context is etc um, if you have time if you want to give a little bit more details on that we have a couple of more minutes so you are uh, please feel free to uh, talk a little bit about the emotional maps yes so we uh, already published an article about that i can put the link here too but the main principle is that where when we uh, pass in the in the when we travel in the city, we feel a lot of emotions uh, related to them. Like uh, depending of your gender, depending of the hour of the day that you pass to the the view, or depending the transport mode that you are in. So uh, we want to collect this data, this emotional data. And there's a lot of uh, another works that uh, are developed with this principle. But what we want to um, uh, make is represent that these emotions with emojis that are very different way to view this data on a map. So the emojis are very, um, it's a new technology in it. And uh, in, in cartography, some maps use that the the emojis but it's not very um how can i say that it's not very very use uh, commonly used for 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 research and now we we want to uh, acquire more data and analyze the difference between the fellow, the filled emotion uh, classifier according gender and another parameters that sometimes is very important to um, to considerate in this in these in these things. The 
É, we analyze also the mode of transport, like uh, cycling, walking, by buses and Uber, so uh, uh, driving, because they, they have uh, different emotions associated with it. Yes, and we believe that this data could be applied to develop uh, urban policies, uh, mainly in urban mobility, once we are analyzing the transport modes and etc. So, uh, for example, in a part of the city that a lot of people feel fear of mugging or something like that, that the that could be uh, develop a urban policy to uh, make better that place of the city with negative emotions and identify in the city and also identify in the city uh, look, uh, places with positive emotions and re re replicate these conditions in the, the rest of the city. Okay, thank you. Very interesting topic and very um, relevant and valid in the social context as well. So um, congratulations on your work. And I'm really looking forward to hear from uh, your work, maybe for your PhD work in the future. So uh, congratulations and thanks, for, th thanks a lot for uh, the great presentation, uh, the great questions from the audience and your comments. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so we have come to the end of our uh, session, uh, early session. So uh, nice having you, nice having all of the presenters here. So um, we are going to close the session right now, but in the schedule, I'm seeing the, the, the annual general meeting uh, of, of the Austria community. So um, you are just, uh, I think, free to um, go in and, 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 and um, follow, follow the general meeting there. Um, for those for, uh, for those of you who want, we are going to have a break for two hours uh, and two hours from now the sessions will continue. So um, thanks a lot and, and have a nice rest of the conference. Thanks for everybody who participated. Goodbye.